Hello, I'm Delia Delore. Welcome to the programme. When it comes to national health care, whose responsibility is it to inform you of the health services you are entitled to? The Ministry of Health and Wellness? Yes, but you too have a responsibility to be aware of and to ask questions about the quality of health care and services that are provided. Stay with me as we bring you a series of programmes where I talk to doctors, nurses and personnel at the Ministry of Health and Wellness. I inform you about the services and achievements in St Lucia's healthcare and tell you about future improvements. I'll ask you questions, give you their answers immediately so you know where to go to if anyone you know needs to go for healthcare. This programme also features interviews in Creole. Now let's access healthcare together. Coming up, the Chief Medical Officer explains her role and the improvements in the health service, how awareness of health services and early visits provides peace of mind, how vital family and friend support is to AIDS and HIV sufferers, why the quality of healthcare is important, and we tell you about free diabetic retinopathy screening. But first... Did you know that waiting times can be shorter if you visited in the afternoon? You can even make an appointment at some health centres. Every video in this series discusses some of the preconceptions of the National Health Service and we give you the facts of the matter. If you attend a sexual and reproductive health clinic, which is not an HIV clinic, no one will know what you're there for unless you tell them. St Lucia has many trained health professionals who have been trained in St Lucia and worldwide. We answer the other perceptions later, so keep watching. I'm with Miss Paula James and Miss Shirley Bissett in Denry and I have one question to ask them both and the question is do you know which hospitals and wellness centres or polyclinics that you could attend when you're in St Lucia? Yes, I can go to the St Jude Hospital, I can go to the Victoria Hospital and into the DNA Hospital as well. Well, as Paula said, there is Victoria Hospital there is St. Jude, which is my favorite hospital to go to. And there is Denry Hospital, which is now a polyclinic. But there are other polyclinics. For example, they, they talk about the Babano Polyclinic. There is the Gulzile Polyclinic. And right now there is the EU, which I guess it's not fully in use, but people go there too. You, you both left out one hospital, which is very close to you. Think of it. The, the hospital. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. But are you aware that you could go to any of the wellness centres in St Lucia? So you don't have to, because you're in Denry, you don't have to just go to the Denry centre. Mm -hmm. You can go to anyone. Were you aware of that? Yes, I was aware of that, yeah. I am aware of that, but for closeness, you would go to the one which is closest to you. Were you both aware that the Denry Hospital's ambulance service is the fastest attending service in St. Lucia? Really? I didn't know that. Wow. I was not aware. And now you've told me, so I know now. Well, thank you both so much. Wow. You can contact us uh, at the end of the programme and if there's anything at all that you need to know about St. Lucia's services and the achievements of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, you can contact us there. I've seen this medical professional many times informing the nation, particularly when there are areas of concern and when there are new health developments. I met St. Lucia's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Merlin Frederick James, at the Literary Health Centre, where I asked her about the role of the CMO and some of the improvements in St. Lucia's health centre. The Chief Medical Officer is like the main technical um, health advisor within the Ministry of Health with responsibility for management of programs and policy and program development and, and many other aspects. But one of the key roles of the Chief Medical Officer is with regards to the health of the public, what we call public health. And there is a particular law, the Public Health Act, that speaks to um, various components of public health, looking at communicable diseases, infectious diseases, looking at um, vaccine preventable diseases, um, water and wastewater issues um, and it covers a mul multiplicity of things. So the Chief Medical Officer is like the main technical officer with responsibility for improving the health of the public. 
What are the key issues surrounding health care that the public should be aware of? I think the public will be very aware um, when we are having infectious disease epidemics because they are obvious. Um, usually many persons are getting ill at the same time, so it's very visible. So when we're having infectious disease epidemics like be it um, the flu or be it dengue, chikungunya, Zika, um, I think the public is very aware of that. But persons also need to be aware, and I think most persons are aware of the fact that the main killers, the main causes of death and um, disability in St. Lucia are actually the non-communicable diseases. So these are the most silent diseases, hypertension, diabetes, heart and lung disease. So these are actually the major causes of, um, of illness in St. Lucia. So the public need to be aware of that. So yes, we need to take necessary precautions. Um, and we know when it comes to mosquito prevention, what it is that we need to do, what we need to do to pre protect ourselves from infectious diseases. But we also need to keep in mind that the non-communicable diseases, lifestyle related diseases, hypertension, diabetes, these are very um, serious diseases and actually the main causes of, of death and problems in, in our healthcare in St. Lucia. What are the recent improvements and achievements of St. Lucia's health service? Well, I think there are many when it comes to improvements and, and perhaps as a Ministry of Health we don't speak enough and showcase enough in terms of what we do and, and what we provide. And um, so when it comes to recent improvements, I would look at some of our core aspects. So we look at mother and child health, what we call maternal and child health care. We know that we had an audit um, some time ago looking at the maternal um, mother and child health care system um, with the intention of reducing the numbers of babies who die or who are born with um, complications. So we call it perinatal and mortality reduction. So that has been a major thrust of ours. So when we did the audits, um, certain gaps were highlighted and we have attempted to address this with increased training, with um, procurement of equipment necessary to monitor the pregnant woman, to resuscitate the newborn. And we believe that our statistics are improving. In time, it will show the impact, but definitely we're moving towards there. Um, we've also had some may recall that we had a schistosomiasis or bilasia survey um, quite recently. And this is a very important aspect for St. Lucia because St. Lucia is one of the few countries, um, probably in the Caribbean, that still have um, schistosomiasis or bilasia, although it is at very, very low levels. So it is not a major epidemic, but it's still endemic. We still um, usually every year pick up one or two adults who have the disease. So we had the survey among school age children and we surveyed over a thousand um, children and found that none of them were actually carrying the disease. So this is a, a, a big win for St. Lucia. Of course it would be good to repeat the survey and maybe have a wider sample but I think we can say at this point that we have practically eliminated schistosomiasis or bilasia in the younger age population. I have a question for you now with the answer provided right afterwards. Then settle in for the Creole segment with Vanel next to you. How many of these services are improvements in St. Lucia's healthcare? A. Maternal and child healthcare. B. Perinatal mortality reduction. C. Training and equipment. 4. Schistosomiasis or Bilasia, known as flatworms. All of these services are available in St. Lucia. Minister is certain that to have a bien word for a siweki, it puts you a month to be clear if your formation, as you have a certain that can cause an issue, if you have a development of a certain. You know that the officer that can join go part of the demasala, the chef officer medical, Dr. Melin Frederick James. He parle de pour que les achievements cette les si j'ai fait. Les vini pour santé publique, ça c'est public health. Cette les si j'ai fait un chai pour que les vini pour santé. Um, Peut-être um, ad adamon qui a changé um, longtemps. Um, Ti bébé, plus adam cette bébé a été mort, 
plia dans ces femmes cette là là yo aller à me coucher à me délai yo te ca c'est un chai et et yo yo te ca mort mais pour apprisement nous nous n'ai un programme et manière nous ca manager femme qui enceinte manière nous ca manager petit bébé qui qui just fait il a baissé un chai am c'est incident cause petit bébé et ben am femme qui enceinte ca mort ça nous a créé maternal mortality et perinatal mortality. So ça, j'adescend. Nous, nous sommes pour faire plus meilleur, les venir pour petit bébé. Et c'est pour ça, um, en tant qu'il passe, nous tenons ça, nous avons créé un perinatal audit. Pour nous garder en toute manière, tout ça nous a fait pour petit bébé. Um, et après nous faire audit là, nous vivons, nous avons um, nos là, ces docteurs pli les sessions à ce manière pour manager petit bébé petit bébé qui n'est problème les les just fait nous aussi gain pli équipement pour um, garder bien um, femme les yo en set yo venir accoucher avec petit bébé les yo just fait so nous j'ai fait un chai pour goué en cas en ce cas ça avant nous tenir un chai bagaille bay comme measles bagaille comme diphtheria la tenir maladie qui était comme mais quand nous avons ces vaccins, c'est tu vas mal là qu'après vaccins, ils peuvent empêcher les jeunes de se ces maladies ça. So nous avons fait un chai pour goûter en cette ici. Docteur Melin Fredrix James aussi tenir une commission par cette ici, à ce manière pour ménager les affaires certes nous. Mon public là qui est tant les lundi épidémique, les lundi un chai qui a bagay con zika, con chikungunya, dengue, am am gros wim. Flu, ça nous a créé flu influenza. Yo kai tan se bagay sa la, pas le nou ni se epidemik sa, an chay moun ka, ka malad, ek, 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 kom se le pli moun ka, ka pale abot se bagay sa. Ek nou sa, sa nou ni pou fe, pou empêche my goyen am si me oje, ek pou empêche les ot kalte maladi bagay kon sida. Me, maladi a ki ka afekte nou pli an set li si, et ce n'est pas juste cette liste, c'est Rouen, la Théa, um, um, en Caraïbes, c'est ça nous a créé non-communicable disease. C'est une maladie qu'on puisse faire doux, prêcher, cancer, um, battre un chè, um, problème avec le fruit cible et ce qui est la qualité de la maladie. Et nous savons, un chai dit que la maladie, c'est une um, manière de nous nou vivre, c'est une manière de nous manger, ça nous a mangé, um, si nous n'avons pas point assez. Um, Exercise, exercise. Si nous avons boit trop d'alcool, et bien si nous avons fumé du um, tabac, toutes ces bagages là, ça affecte nous. So, ça nous te um, cette cette ici garder. Nous ne pouvons faire ça nous pe pour empêcher ces qualités maladies à nous créer infectious diseases. Mais c'est les autres là, c'est non communicable diseases là, NCDs, puis ça doux, pressure. Nous ne pouvons try pour faire ça nous pe pour baisser ces qualités maladies là. Sous sa dîme, qui laisse service sur tes sept lessi, nous j'a fait gros pour oui Adam. E. Étoinement et équipement. B. Za fait point ka maman et petit bébé. C. Bilazia. D. Za fait des messes petit bébé ka mort avant yon fait. Ou est pas cela, c'est yon tout. Non-communicable chronic diseases are related to the way we live, how we look after our bodies, what we eat, how much we eat, how we recognize symptoms of diseases, knowing where to go to for treatment, and also knowing the services our healthcare provides. You and I have a responsibility to be knowledgeable and to practice a healthy lifestyle as much as possible. Prevention is better than cure. Did you know that one in eight people have died from non-communicable chronic diseases known as NCDs in St. Lucia? So, what is an NCD? And what services does St. Lucia's non-communicable chronic diseases unit provide? Non-communicable chronic diseases, as the name suggests, would be um, non-communicable, of course, means that you would not be able to catch it from somebody else or that it's not contagious. And chronic it means that it is um, long-lasting, so um, chronic, non-communicable chronic diseases tend to be incurable diseases. They can be treated and controlled but not cured. Um, in terms of services, um, the 
non-communicable -communic chronic disease department or the NCD department, um, it actually encompasses various um, departments, for want of a better word. Um, and we're looking at community nursing, um, the nutrition department, Bureau of Health Education, epidemiology. And um, what we do basically is to coordinate um, activities, get towards um, raising awareness of major um, NCDs and their risk factors, um, such as cancer, high blood pressure, diabetes. We also look at data collection for NCDs and their risk factors. Um, so we look at things like prevalence of um, particular diseases um, like diabetes, cancer, and we're actually in the process of implementing a countrywide survey which will look at the major risk factors for diseases like diabetes, cancer, and high blood pressure. Um, and we're very excited about that because that of course will give us information that we could use to to look at improving our health um, system and improving policies get towards decreasing um, the, the, the prevalence of risk factors and those diseases. Um, we look at improved prevention of NCDs as an NCD department. We, look, uh, we do a lot of education um, of our population. We look at policies which can protect our population, especially when we're looking at the more vulnerable groups um, such as children. So um, some of the things we're working on um, in uh, um, policies that have to do with um, smoke-free spaces, um, so persons are protected from tobacco smoke, um, breastfeeding in infancy, um, which we is geared towards improving um, the childhood obesity, and we're also looking at um, trying to get sodas out of the schools, um, what we call sugar-sweetened beverages, trying to um, decrease um, access of the um, school to the school um, students. We're also looking at, um, in terms of control of NCDs, one of the projects we're actually looking at right now is a project called HEARTS, and we are actually looking in the health centers, in our primary care facilities, and we are putting things in place to improve blood pressure control in our, our population of um, patients who is actually hypertensive and that is geared towards decreasing strokes and heart attacks in that population. So we're doing quite a bit of stuff. The Non-Communicable Chronic Disease Unit works with other departments to raise awareness on how to treat cancer, diabetes and other NCDs. True or false? True. Non-communicable chronic diseases, NCDs, c'est une maladie qui a affecté chai sept blessés. Et puis c'est pour raison ça là. Le ministère de Santé a mis à chai pèse à son manière de monde sa cotouille et a pêché la maladie ça là. Met officier médical pour non-communicable chronic diseases, Dr. Shannon Sir Philbert, parlait de travail ministère de Santé qui a fait l'avenir pour démarrer ça là. Non-communicable diseases, um, c'est maladie qui qui pas qu'à courir à tout monde, mais mon cas joigné et qui nous ça tout été mais nous pas dire oui. Bon, département nous qu'à garder maladie qu'on a nous savent nous j'ai qu'à garder ça qu'a fait cette liste et nous j'ai ouais about huit en dix monde qui qu'a moins cette liste c'est ça qui qu'a tué yo. Uh, uh, nous qu'a parlé gros monde um, parti maman. Et ça, le département nous a fait un chai bai. Nous, really, nous avons travaillé avec tout le monde qui est dans le département. Nous avons travaillé avec ces noces-là. Nous avons travaillé avec les gens qui ont parlé de l'éducation. Nous avons parlé avec les gens qui ont fait formation. Nous avons travaillé avec les gens qui ont gardé avec des gens qui ont pour manger. Tout ça, nous avons travaillé ensemble. Bon, ça nous a fait un département. Là, nous avons travaillé ensemble, c'est nous qui avons dit que nous avons fait. Um, pour que nous qui ça ces maladies ça a fait, qui ça a causé pour jouer ces maladies là. Um, Expressement, là, nous avons parlé de la cancer, de la pression, de la pression. Nous avons parlé de la pression pour que nous um, 
faire ça yo besoin faire nous ca aussi nous ca amasser information à chaque délai ou voulez faire ou voulez faire un bagage mais sous pas ni information ou pas ni information pour d'où qui ça besoin faire so ministre la ca garder ça et nous ca amasser à chaque information pour garder comment les peuple saint lucie ca fait Um, um, se whisk, se bai ki kai um, bayo, se maladi sa la. Nou osi ka gade, um, gade se mamay la, ko an, an, an departman, ou ka gade se mamay la, kouman ou ka proteje mamay from maladi, ko hapi se mamay sa pa kai toujou mamay, yo kai vin gwan. Nou ka gade bai ko um, proteje se mamay sa from um, vin tuwa go, pis la ou ka vin tuwa go, ou ka ni maladi kon pi sa dou preche bay. So, depi yo piti nou, javle mou chwe yo koumanye pou manje bien. So, depat men nou ka gade bay kon um, se soft drink la bay, pale bay yo about sa, ek mete loa bay pou proteje yo, pou bay kon han pa vanan l'ekol bay kon han. Nou ka try fè maman bay se maman la pli tete, pis pli yo bay se maman la tete, la yo piti, Pli se mamay la pa ka yvin twop ko le yo ka profite. No si ka le yvin a se health centers la, nou ka try fe sa nou ka bay pep set li si pli me a se health centers la. So se joa nou ka gade an bay yo ka kouye hat se be tche. Nou ka gade koumane anou sa proteje tche pep set li si ki jani presha. Koumane anou sa fe se moun sa en de yo. Um, ni pressure yo pli me pou yo pa jwen um, stroke, pou yo pa jwen um, maladi tche kote yo ka mo sibit. So, tout se bay sa nou ka, nou ka fe pou nou um, ende um, pep nou. Es maladi non communicable se yon nou sa jewi. E, oui, B, non. Wepos la se nous sa tweete maladi non communicable, mais nous pas sa jewi. Attending a sexual and reproductive clinic or an HIV clinic can make us feel scared and nervous and issues of stigma and confidentiality often prevent us from visiting clinics. But it's our health and to live longer, we must take steps to educate ourselves and to face our fears so that we don't have to let the stigma hamper us. Our ultimate care should be about living longer, so we must make efforts to be informed and receive all the help we can get. Support from family and friends also helps when we are faced with an infectious disease. Dr. Gail Gujada explains. The Infectious Diseases Unit has responsibility for three main programs um, related to tuberculosis, um, HIV and sexually transmitted infections, and Hansen's disease. And for persons who don't know what Hansen's disease is, we're talking about leprosy. In terms of achievements, um, one of the big achievements we have made is with regard to um, our sexually transmitted infection. We have integrated sexual and reproductive health clinics. We have one in the north at the Victoria Hospital. It's a community clinic and we also have one in the south at the V Fort Health Center. The one at VH um, really became integrated as of March 2017 and I'm happy to say as of January 2019 we achieved the one at the um, V Fort Health Center. So at V Fort Health Center, we went from a once a month clinic plus a once a week clinic to an integrated once a week clinic. And with regard to sexual and reproductive health, we offer services to persons who are not only locals, but also non-nationals. Um, we offer confidential non-discriminatory services. And we have things like testing for sexually transmitted infections, including syphilis, HIV, Hepatitis B, Hepatitis C. We have treatment for HIV. Um, in terms of clinical management of HIV, we do all testing of bloods as routinely required. All collection is done at the clinic. 
um, medications are collected at um, various pharmacy points and in terms of collection of medications we usually inform clients when we are treating them where they can collect their medications from. Um, in terms of TB, um, while we do not treat for TB tuberculosis at the clinic, we um, try to test at least um, persons living with HIV for TB. Um, the unit itself is trying to um, bring TB out on the map. St. Lucia is a low incidence country for TB. However, we are working with the goal um, that we want to end TB, which is a World Health Organization strategy, the NTB strategy. So the goal is to end TB by 2035. So we are working along um, those lines. So in terms of our services, um, we do not discuss um, a patient's details, whether a patient is um, has a disease or not. And I say a disease with reference to TB, leprosy, which is Hansen's disease, HIV, syphilis, gonorrhea. Um, ethically, as medical professionals, we are all bound um, by an oath for confidentiality. So, and legally, we are not supposed to discuss a patient's details. So, from my perspective personally, having worked on the unit and from the perspective of the um, personnel I have worked with, the idea is that we maintain a client's confidentiality and there would be repercussions if that confidentiality is breached and we actually find a professional who has breached confidentiality. The Sexual and Reproductive Health Clinic is an HIV clinic, yes or no? No. Ada Minister de Serti, Lani Yon Unit Infectious Diseases. Kini was consabilite pour trois programmes kini pour faire pi maladi tuberculosis, HIV, et sexually transmitted diseases et pi leprosy. Yon ada se go achievement département sala, se de clinic sexual et reproductive a pe yon. Yon a l'hôpital Victoria, et pi lot la an plas sa te a vie form. Moun sa fe l'examé pou sexually transmitted infections kon HIV, syphilis, hepatitis B, et C. Yon si sa jwen tretman pou moun et pi HIV, et moun ki ni HIV sa fe l'examé pou tuberculosis. Met officier medical pour unit infectious diseases, Dr. Gil Kajabu, parle des affaires confiance à l'information moun qui visite clinique sexuelle et reproductive. Et de qui, un docteur et Bernos passe à discuter pièce qualité information à soi moun, même si yon ni maladie et ben pas ni yon. Est-ce ou sa dino, comme clinique sexuelle et reproductive, nous ni un set ici? A, 4, B, 6, C, Yon, D, D. Réponse là, c'est D. Yon un sud et Yon un nord pays. Laboratories are the homes of medical discoveries. They assist in diagnosing disease, mostly through analysis of tissue, cell and body fluid samples. I asked consultant pathologist Dr. Wayne Felicien what are some of the services the Ezra Long Laboratory provides? The Ezra Long Laboratory at Victoria Hospital provides two different types of services, clinical laboratory services and pathological laboratory services. The clinical involves testing different types of blood samples, tissue samples, and the pathological involves postmortems. It involves surgical biopsies where persons go to surgery, they remove certain body parts and then we look at it under the microscope and try to tell them whether it may or may not be cancerous. Um, some of the services would include the chemistry or immunology section, the serology where we test HIV and other STIs. We also do microbiology where we test for bacteria. We test for some viral strains, especially with this um, cases of the flu coming on H1N1 that are around. Also we test for stools, 
parasites. We also have a blood bank service which collects blood which we need, especially with the increase in violence and different pathological entities which require donation of blood and blood transfusions. We also have the hematology department as well where we check to see if people have high or low blood counts as well. And what are the improvements and achievements within the lab? Well, one of the improvements I think we've done is trying to implement an environment that is open with communication. We've tried to change the culture in where it is more a customer-oriented service as opposed to just machinery operated, we're just doing tests. We try to um, deliver a service that the customer can be confident in. Um, we've also tried to change the different equipment that we're trying to do so that they're more robust and they're willing to stand to. We have equipment that has probably outlived its time and now getting new equipment would be able to help our what we call our turnaround time in terms of delivering results. You wouldn't want a result being two to three weeks or months. At the Ezra Long Laboratory, you will experience A, no communication, B, improved turnaround time. The answer is B, patients experience shorter waiting periods at the Ezra Long Laboratory. Minister is certain new West Coast Savile Table Pochi West Seplis here in the laboratory. Sase yon plus kote yon kafe with Shas Medical. Episaka assistes a doctor pu dekouver different maladi adan moun. Yon ada se go lab pebe klase Ezra Long Laboratory. Dibekte pu lab a doctor Wayne Felicien Pale de potas lab sala, le vini pou servis sati. Me lab la ipon tan, la ka pale de servis sante. Pis lab la se kote a tout se l'examine en kafet. Ek se dokte a ni pou servis sa. Apo yo examine, l'examine se pa, se moun nan. Yo ka vwe pou lab la, ve yi. Fè yon de tes a souye pou di yo si sa yo ka kwe, se sa yo ni. Ek, le nou fè tout sa, nou ni pou fè an e dan manye se publik la, se dokte la, e tout moun ni pou ni konfiyans an e sa nou ka fè. Ek, le nou fè an tes, examine, nou ni pou fè plimeye chak fwa nou fè. Ek, nou pou pou vè manye nou ka fè, pou fè plimeye pour assurer si l'année pièce trois cas nous savons nous savons j'ai avant nous voyons docteur résultat à même les à ministère de santé qu'à travailler pour faire changement en manière ou qu'à ménager la bla à présent ça nous qu'à faire nous nous qu'à parler puis on a l'autre plus communication nous qu'à ça plus mais à présent avec les moyens de communication Nous avons parlé et puis c'est mon qui a venu faire le test, c'est le docteur et tout le monde qui a fait le test et qui a fait le test de test. Nous avons parlé et puis nous avons essayé de changer la manière dont nous avons fait ce test. Nous avons acheté l'équipement qui est plus meilleur pour faire ce test. Et nous voulons mener le test que nous n'avons pas fait avant et après nous avons fait pour by doctor please aid the doctor to buy a diagnosis primary as usadino epilab as long la as mampe bikla kai join a primary service a we b no we post la c we The quality of health systems and its services affect people, families and communities. If you don't know what services you have access to, how to receive them and the quality of the services provided, then an individual concern can easily become a family concern, but then it becomes a community issue before becoming a national issue. You get my drift. But that's a common pattern that knowledge and education can break. 
These programs are important. It's one of the places the Ministry of Health and Wellness informs you of the services available and it's up to you to use the services. I asked Quality Assurance Manager Ms. Ira Isaacs how important the quality of St. Lucia's healthcare is. When we speak about quality, we're speaking about a care that is affordable, it's accessible to the persons who need it. And although it's accessible, it is also what I would say safe, uh, it's secure, it maintains their dignity and it also provides them with care that they are satisfied with at a certain level. So this is what we call the international standards. Uh, so when we talk about quality in healthcare services, we are seeing the healthcare, the care that we give you, the services that are delivered are safe, it's accessible, it's affordable and it's exactly what you want. It meets your need to ensure that you are healthy. And what are the improvements and achievements within your department? Oh, there has been many achievements over the past five years in quality. For instance, St. Lucia has been making a considerable stride in the OECS with regards to quality. Uh, we have a quality department established at the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. and that department allows us to assess the, the care that is being delivered, delivered to the persons. With regards to the gaps that we have seen, what we noted is that we had needed to embrace the concept of being internationally um, recognized as having quality, safe care that, it was, that is accessible and affordable for clients and that they are satisfied with. So we, move, we have now moved to creating international standards on a national level. So we have healthcare standards for both our healthcare practitioners and providers, um, what are the care that's supposed to be delivering to the poorest people, um, how should they feel about the care, if they're not satisfied, what can you do? Also we have collaborated with the St. Lucia Borough of Standard on this and they have helped us to improve our standards level in the sense that they have allowed us to collaborate with the healthcare professionals, with the people, to find out what really were our gaps and how we can address it. We have also been in collaboration with CAFO, the Caribbean Agency for Public Health, and they have helped us considerably in just the aspects of our labs, for instance, and our Caribbean Medical Labs Foundation. They have worked with us to improve the quality in the labs on a tier system. We have now moved to tier one, which means that the services are being improved. And it is so, we have made such considerable improvements that it is said by 2020 we can be accredited. Not many persons in the OECS can say that. Another thing is that we have created a quality policy, our national healthcare quality policy that guides us in how we should be establishing quality, that guides us in what should we be doing, what requirements should we be meeting to meet the international standards. And this has helped us considerably. Also, we hear persons speaking about quality in healthcare. If you really go back 10 to 15 years, this was some, a phenomenon that wasn't really popular. But now you're hearing persons from the government level, from the technical level, from the healthcare providers level. Even your clients, the patients, the family and community are talking about quality. And this is great improvement. I would say it is one of the greatest improvements that we've had. What is the expectations of the public when it comes to delivering quality services in the health system? So what they can expect is services that meets your needs, that fits you, that you are satisfied with. We are saying that you have a right to health care, a right to be healthy. So when we talk about quality, what it means for you is that as much as we have set standards for ourselves, we are saying this is the level of care that should be given to you and if you are not satisfied, we are going to do our best as possible to ensure that we meet those needs. It also means that we are creating what we call a, a charter, a patient charter of rights. If we in any way breach your rights, we will be held accountable for it. And so this is important because many times our clients, our population, do not understand their rights. And we are saying for you to be healthy, 
we need to do our part in keeping you healthy, but we also need to empower you as well to be healthy. And part of that is knowing your rights and knowing when your rights are breached and what can you do about it. And also hold us accountable when we do not give you the quality of care that you need. St. Lucia's Healthcare Service provides A, international standards on a national level, or B, international standards on selected community levels. The answer is St. Lucia's Healthcare Service provides international standards on a national level. Live in Ipo Service 30, Ministry 30, Osi Wire Porter. Pour assurer le service là available, bon marché en puy, c'est ni sauve et puis un pas et puis standard international. J'ai ouvert pour assurer votre qualité au ministère des santé, savez de quality assurance manager, Ira Isaacs. Parlez de progrès sept les six j'ai fait, les vini pour ça fait qualité. Ministère des santé, j'ai établi un office qui nous responsabilité pour ça fait qualité et puis pour garder le service là yoka offre bon public là. Pour assurer que ces services-là, le ministère a offert un standard, il y a aussi un travail et puis différentes agences comme saint Lucia Bureau Standards et puis Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFO. Le ministère de Santé a aussi déjà établi une policy National Healthcare Quality qui a été le ministère a qui ça a mérité pour assurer les services de qualité et puis standard. Ministère de Santé qui a produit le service santé qui a sous A. Standard de Kawahibla B. Standard international Réponse là c'est Standard international Knowing about health services is essential to well-being. One of the major complications in diabetes is blindness. The Barbano Health and Wellness Center provides a screening program where diabetics can get their eyes checked. If retinopathy is detected early, vision can be preserved. I asked Nurse Noble to tell us more about the Diabetic Retinopathy Screening Program. The National Diabetic Retinopathy Program um, is funded by the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust and this program started in February 2018 and it's run by the Ministry of Health. Um, thus far, this program, we have screening clinics at um, Castries Health Center to serve persons in the north, and um, a screening clinic in Beaufort to serve persons in the south. At each of these clinics, we have um, clinics taking place on a Thursday and a Friday. Um, added to this program is a laser clinic which is held in Barbano Wellness Center, and this clinic takes place every second Friday and fourth Friday of the month. Why is the program important? The program is important because we have a lot of persons with diabetes in Russia and diabetic retinopathy is one of the complications of diabetes. Um, at initial stages of diabetic retinopathy, there may be no signs or symptoms. So clients don't really know that they may have um, diabetic retinopathy until um, major visual changes take place. So we are encouraging all persons with diabetes even before the symptoms show up, to get the eyes screened and check to see if there's any damage to the back of the eyes, so this can be treated and this will help preserve their vision. The Ministry of Health would like to encourage persons, to, persons with diabetes to come to the clinics to get their, their, their eyes checked to see if there is damage to the retina because the service is free. It's free at all the, the, the centers I mentioned to you and they should try their best to find out about it, they can call, they can visit the, the, the health settings and find out when do they come in to get their eyes checked. It's important because um, blindness is one of the major complications of diabetic retinopathy. And if we can, can determine or we can detect retinopathy early enough, then something can be done and their vision can be preserved. So I'm encouraging everybody to, with diabetes to come and get their eyes checked do the early exam and see if everything is okay. If diabetic retinopathy is detected early, vision can be preserved. True or false? True. 
Pour les gens qui ont une maladie pesado, ça c'est diabète. Ils aussi ça joue un problème épicé ou exavèg. Ça y est qu'à une maladie diabétique retinopathie. Le ministère de santé n'y a pas pour grand monde place. Côté les gens qui ont pesado, ça visite un place santé. Côté un os et un docteur, ça l'examine des yeux. Yon nos Sharon Tench Nobel dit ki y a pour les gens qui ont pesado. Pour l'examen de pour assurer qu'il n'y a pas de vision. Je vais encourager tout le monde qui a un diabétis pour faire en sorte qu'il aille checker les yeux. Parce que là, on a un diabétique rétinopathie. En commencement de la maladie, on ne peut pas sentir rien. Là, on sent un bagage et puis on voit que la vision a changé. Ça signifie que la maladie est en avance de la maladie. Je vais encourager tout le monde. Le ministre de la Health, quand je encourage tout le monde qui a des diabétiques pour aller au Health Center et de Castri et BV4, je vais à la clinique là, et puis je vais un appointment pour checker. Il est important parce que les diabétiques ne peuvent pas faire ça, mais ils ne peuvent pas la vision. Si vous voulez sauver la vision, vous avez besoin d'aller au Health Center et puis de trouver out about programme, find out about qui joue sa venue et puis make sure ou, 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 ou check you. Est-ce si a moun qui ni maladie pesado, et sa bien bonne yon ni diabetic retinopathy, sa sauve vision yo. A, oui, B, non. We pas la se, oui. I can't stress enough how important it is to get your eyes checked if you are diabetic. The screening is free and it's not painful. I asked Nurse Charles at the Barbano Health and Wellness Clinic to explain the screening process and how results are graded. When the clients get to us, they go through what is called the registration process at the front um, where they would uh, just basically register, give their names and um, and we, from there we do an educative process with them and so we try to our best to help the patients understand because the whole purpose of this would be futile if the clients do not understand it's actually is the high blood sugars that contributes towards the damage that takes place in the back of the eye and so we, we have this talk with them where we educate them and give them an opportunity to vent and ask their questions with regards to diabetic retinopathy and what it's all about and what they're there for. After that, they're called in where we interact with them and we you know, basically take a few information about them in terms of the history, how long have they been diabetic, the family history of diabetes, and um, find out a few other things about their medical conditions. And then from there, we basically, we will um, go through an eye screening process with them where we do a, vi a visu visual acuity test. Um, that is basically to give us an idea as to how well they can see. Uh, we've had clients who've come to us, um, they're actually blind and they can't see, thinking that we could actually restore the vision. And this is not what we're, the purpose of the project. So from there, after we've done the visual acuity test to find, give us an idea how well they can see, we dilate the eye, where we add an eye drop to the eye, which would dilate the eye. And um, the dilation is um, to open up the pupils so that the, when we put them on the DRS uh, machine, that the machine could see properly in the back of the eye. A lot of the clients, after we've dilated the eyes, we ask them to go back and sit outside where they, in a waiting area where they keep their eyes closed for about 10 minutes. Now that 10 minutes is very vital towards the, the dilation of the eye and the entire screening process. They, a lot of them tend to forget to actually keep their eyes closed for the 10 minutes. And so when, when we would have put them, they call them back inside and put them on the machine, the machine says to us that they are, the pupils are too small. So we have to get them to go back outside, sit down and go through the entire process all over again, just to get their eyes dilated. So we, we try to emphasize during the teaching, the importance of keeping their eyes closed for the 10 minutes. And from that, when, they've, when they come back inside, we actually put them on the DRS machine and um, we take the pictures of the eyes. Um, the machine takes a, a total of four pictures of each eye. And um, from there, we, we would have, we would interpret the pictures. 
we were, because we were all great as screeners, we would interpret the pictures and we would refer them accordingly. Whether those who would be needing to see, to, who would need laser surgery, we would refer them to the Babylon Wellness Center. Um, there are other clients, maybe they might have other indications, and so we would refer them to the, the specific designations that they would need to go to. When eye drops are put into your eyes, and when you receive laser treatment, it's painful. True or false? No, it's not painful. The most important thing is to keep your eyes closed for 10 minutes for proper dilation. The laser will not burn your pupils. Minister de Sati ka kwatine kwaje setlisye ki ni maladi pisado pou pwe l'avantage pou gwom l'examezye yo. Yono skete je Charles pale de sistem la yo ni a plas pou l'examezye se moun sa la. Lese kliyan vini sa yo ka fe nou ka ale pou an proses kote yo ka registwe. E ka pou yo registwe nou ka ni an ti sesyon e ki yo kote nou ka indike yo abou ki sa yo vini fe le nou ka pale abou diabetic retinopathy. Paske e potas lan se nou vle yo ko pwan dat ki se sikla, le sikla eleve a san kontinuelman se sa ki ka domaje venan ki e pa de eje ya. Ek so nou ka try best nou pou nou sa indike yo ek fe yo ko pwan se ba e sa la. Apwe sa e nou ka kouye yo an didan kote nou ka ni yon an ti screening e pi yo nou ka fon an ti pale ek yo Nou ka yma de yo sete kwesyon about diabetes yo, ki mizitan yo ni, ek sete kwesyon about maladi ya. Ek den apwe sa, nou ka yma, nou ka chek tout ba yo, chek presha, chek sikla. Ek den nou ka yma fe sa, nou ka kouye yon visual acuity test ek yo. Kote nou ka yma de yo sete kwesyon, nou ka yma de yo chek jye yo, gade ki manye yo ka we. Paske nou, yi e potan pou nou sa sa, apwe zet man sa la, ki manye yo ka we. Ek den apwe sa, nou ka yfe sa yon ka kouye dilet, nou ka yda meton eye drop a de dan jye yo. Kote eye drop la, yi ka yfe de jye a pou ouve bien. On chay de le, man ka pale a bal, man ka mande yo, es yo sa jeme ouwe, on chat le oswe. Man yfe jye chat la ka ouve gwan le oswe an fe nouwe. Ek se sa nou ka try achieve, so dat le nou mette yon le DRS machine nan, machine nan ka yfe sa ouwe bien pa de jye a, pou nou sa, le nou gade se imaj la so dat ki nou ka yk kopwan ki sa ki ka pwan ke an de dan jye ya. Ek apwe sa, sel nou ka gade se imaj la, nou ka interprete se imaj la, ek den nou ka yk refer se client lan akordin pou se difwa kote ya yo bouzen ale ya. Sa ki bouzen leza, nou ka yk voye yo an health center babou nou a kote yo ka yk fe leza se jye ya. Ek lot kleyan ki bouzen le de lani kleyan ki bouzen vini wè nou an di dan 3 mwa paske nou za wè dat ki lani yon ti afek man ki ka pwen kou an jye ya. Nou ka yma de yo pou vi an 3 mwa kote nou ka yk vi e skrin jye ya ba yo. Eben lani lot kleyan ki bouzen ale di fwo an kote paske yon e di fwo an problem. So nou ka yk refer yo akordin pou sa. Es le yo ka l'examen pou diabetic retinopathy. Yo ka gade de zye ya. E, oui, B, non. Oui, pense là, c'est oui. Diabetic retinopathy screening is now available in St. Lucia. It's one of the many improvements the Ministry of Health and Wellness has achieved, so there's no need to leave the island, and it's a free service, thanks to a collaboration with the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. I spoke to Dr. Dara Burt about the service. The diabetic retinopathy um, program has improved because, as you know, it's a new program. We started in February 2018, so we're just a little over a year. And from the time we've started, we've surpassed our numbers. We've screened um, over 1,200 patients, and we've lasered over 100 patients in the past year alone. And the numbers are growing constantly. Um, when we first started the program, we only started with eight screeners and graders. Those are the people who take the pictures of the back of the eye, and they grade the images. And now we're up to at least 16 fully trained and qualified staff. So in the past year, we have lots of achievements that we're very proud of. Can you tell us about some of the collaborations? Um, as I said, this program is new. It started off with a, with a meeting with the Ministry of Health and a team from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine because a grant was obtained from the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Fund. And with, the, with getting this grant, um, the team at the 
London School of Tropical Hygiene and Medicine, they came down to meet with stakeholders, including the Ministry of Health, and we decided this is a viable option for St. Lucia, so everybody was on board, and that's how we were able to start this program in February 2018. The Diabetic Retinopathy Screening Program provides laser treatment at the Barbano Health Centre. True or false? True. The screening program has treated more than 1,200 patients in one year. True or false? True. About program diabetic retinopathy, la aussi ni tuet malaise pour mon ki bouise service salam. Your doctor ki ka fe tuet malaise a place sati babono, Dr. Dara Boot. Pale dip manye i ple pi po gwe program sala, depi etabri alane 2018. Ere ki depi yo kouma se program sala, minister a jal examen ho yon mil de sa set le sien pou diabetic retinopathy, epi a ho yon sa set le sien, Ja jwenn twèt man les an. An ba pogwam la, yo osi ni 16 twavaye minister de sati ki ja jwenn etwenn man pou screening et grading pou diabetic retinopathy. Set le siye, sa pwè l'avantaj pogwam diabetic retinopathy san peyi anyen. Servis l'examen pou diabetic retinopathy ka pwè kou a plas sati vi fò e kastwi e pi servis leza ka pwè kou a plas sati babo nou. Set li siyen ki ni maladi pisado, ni pou peye pou screening diabetic retinopathy. E, we, be, non. We postla si, non. I look forward to sharing more services and the improvements and achievements of the Ministry of Health and Wellness with you very soon. In the meantime, the contact details for the services mentioned in this video follows. Don't hesitate to call your nearest healthcare provider to make an appointment. The quality of life relies on health. Make sure you're informed. Until next time, goodbye.